order and welcome all our guests. It's nice to see you. Um, any agenda revisions? I'm just going to do this one. Student presentation. Let's do it. Any other revisions? Um, not that I can think of, Adrian. I think we're all Okay. Uh, there will be an extra appointment that I have in my hand here. There will be a what? Another appointment. Oh, got it. Another person that's in my hand. Yep. And then I have some more handouts for <laughs> You guys ready? I am. Sierra. Sierra, are you ready? Not ready. Do you care if I turn out the light? No, go ahead. No, here. Please do. So, uh, this is my STEM project um, from Agra 2 STEM, and it's on religious architecture. And the my project statement for this was that I was going to create a building um, that could uh, accommodate four different religions, which is Islam, Christianity, Judaism, and, and uh, <coughs> Hinduism, um, no, and Islam, and, um, and the idea that there was a population that, had, that was multi-religious uh, and they did not have a place of worship for all these things. So it was to create a design for a building that could accommodate all religions using the architecture of each of them. And so um, my first religion is Hinduism. And in the Hinduism cosmology theory, it suggests that the universe is continuously in a cycle of creation, um, preservation, and destruction. And so these stages are represented by the three major <coughs> Hindu gods, which are Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. And the cycle is infinite, as well as the Hindu concept of rebirth, which is believed to occur until one becomes enlightened. So infinity, so sorry. Oh, that's fine. Infinity um, and repetition are really big themes in Hinduism, and so is the journey towards enlightenment. And so all of these themes are found in Hindu architecture through the use of fractals and layers, and most commonly known as Hindu mandalas are derived and inspired by fractals. This is a mandala. It's not specific to Hinduism, but it's obvious that it is a fractal, as well as the exterior designs of Hindu temples, um, which are actually designed majority from a helicopter view to um, show this um, fractal, which is imperfect, but it is um, based on a fractal, which is called the Sri Yantra, and it's believed to um, represent the entire creation of the universe in the Hindu religion. Sierra, I'm going to interrupt oh, for so just sorry. a second. Yeah. Just introduce yourself. Oh, my name is Sierra <laughs> Henderson. And take a deep breath. You're fine. I'm a sophomore. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. You do yeah. You are. Okay. Um, incredibly impressive. And so I went through um, some of the math for time purposes. I'll be brief. Um, <laughs> for uh, the math of Hinduism, which uses fractals, and I talked about um, some of the um, main like principles and rules of fractals that are used to create them in Hinduism. And I also went through and created the Sri Yantra, um, which is the origin of the universe. And I actually, because it's an imperfect fractal, I ended up using ge geometry of triangles with proportional changes in um, angle and in size dilation um, to create it where everything is intersecting the same lines. And so for Islam, Islamic buildings often have numer numerical components of four and eight, or multiples of those numbers. And that's because these numbers are significant to Islamic culture and architecture because they are numbers found in the Rub al Hizb or the eight-pointed star, which is that symbol up there. And so the golden ratio is also used to inscribe circles and squares, which helps create the eight-pointed star symbol with the circle in the middle to be proportionate. Okay. Um, the, so the Rub al-Hizb is used to represent the Islamic religion as a whole, similar to the Star of David or the Holy Cross for Judaism or Christianity. And the eight-pointed star, the Rub al-Hizb, if you trace it back through history, 
It actually originates from the seal of Melchizedek, which is a royal line and priesthood, um, both found in the Christian Bible and in the Torah. And King Melchizedek was uh, a biblical character. He was the king of um, Salem. And what's interesting is that King Melchizedek and um, Jesus Christ, or his proper Hebrew name is Yeshua, um, they had many um, connections. And some uh, forms of Christianity even consider King Melchizedek to be the, to be, <laughs> he was Jesus Christ before Jesus Christ was born. And that's because they both had um, a, the anointing to bring heaven to earth because they both had the anointings to be priests and they had uh, royal bloodlines um, so they could be kings, particularly King Melchizedek, so they could bring religious aspects into political life and rule everything um, from God's perspective. Um, so this is some of the simple geometry to create the Rubel Heath symbol, which is used by um, bisecting lines with compass and connecting lines that are made and then bisecting again the original square to get one that's at a 45 degree um, angle to it. And so this is, explains how the golden ratio is used to create the circle in the Rubel Heath. And so you bisect um, the lines of the square um, twice to create um, points for the center points of the circles um, that you make and then you get this shape which you use to prove that the radius of the center circle is the golden ratio and so you can do that by creating a right triangle using some of the center points of the circles and you get that um, one side is two and one side is one and so you have to find the length of the hypotenuse using a squared plus b squared equals c squared, um, which two squared plus one squared equals five. You simplify it. Um, the hypotenuse is the uh, square root of five. And so if you split the hypotenuse in half, um, it's um, the square root of five divided by two. And you have to subtract half because that is the radius of one of these small circles. And so that gives you the radius of the center circle, which um, this is equivalent to that, which is one of the versions of the golden ratio. And this is what it looks like once you put the proportionate circle into the squares. Um, this is uh, Judaism, and it was very hard to find information on the architecture of Judaism because they have non-uniform architecture, and they usually have more modern and simplistic designs because designated synagogues weren't really um, began to be created um, until the late 18th century. And so there was an absence of defining Jewish culture around the arts and architecture. And this is because uh, throughout history, Jews have been persecuted and targeted because of their religion. And so they were continuously fleeing conflict and that persecution. And so they ended up scattered throughout the globe and they were always minorities. So they didn't have the funds or the popular vote to, um, spend their time and money to create one. This is the oldest synagogue to continuously be in use, and it's in Prague, and it was made in the third century. Uh, so the simple geometric patterns and designs are one of the commonalities that you can usually find in different synagogues, and the Star of David is the uh, most common. Um, the Star of David is also known as the Seal of Solomon, and so King David of Israel and his son Solomon, which are depicted here, um, use this symbol as one of the royal line's 44 seals. There are 44 seals of King David, and you can see that the Star of David is up there. And so um, basic ge geometry is used to inscribe equilateral triangles in circles to create the Star of David. Yeah. And so this shows some of the basic geometry we're using a compass set to the radius of the outer circle. You go around and you get six points that are equal distance apart. And if you go and create um, triangles, they create perfect equilateral triangles within the circle. Um, this is Christianity. Um, so I focus mostly on Catholic architecture, which mostly focuses on ceiling designs and steeples. And this is because interior and exterior designs of um, churches are designed to draw your eyes upwards towards heaven. You can see this picture sort of draws your eyes all the way up to the top, 
up to the sky, and this is pretty common for Catholic architecture. And Catholic architecture is also more greatly focused on visuals and pictures of important historical or biblical moments than any other religion. They use lots of pictures and paintings and um, stained glass um, rather than geometric designs. And so something is that for the basic um, buildings and structures, they um, Christianity typically uses ratios that are meaningful by using meaningful numbers um, to the religion. And so some of these are um, seven, which represents that the world was created in seven days according to the Bible. Um, every blessing will be returned sevenfold. Um, repetitive biblical importance is just, <laughs> the number seven is used very often in the Bible. And an example is in Joshua 6.3, which was the battle of Battle of Jericho, which was the first battle that the Israelites um, had to um, do to defeat Canaan, um, which was considered their promised land, and so they were trying to conquer it. And it says, and seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns, and the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the walls of Jericho will come tumbling down, and ye will defeat them. And according to the Bible, it happens. And uh, the number six is um, Good Friday, which is the sixth day of the Holy Week, the week leading up to Easter and the day Yeshua was crucified and died. Um, six also represents the day of the creation of man that occurred on the sixth day out of the seven days of creation of the world. And number three represents the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the last one is number eight, which represents most commonly the second coming of uh, Yeshua or Jesus to earth. It's a very incredibly important and anticipated date within Christianity, but the timing of the event is unknown. It's not like the ending of the world of other religions where it was so 2012, that's when the world will end. And the only reference to time given in the Bible is the eighth day. And so what this means is that the world was created in seven days, and we mark time with seven days a week, and then we repeat it again. So the symbolism of the eighth day is what happens after recorded time which means the destruction or the end of the world. And it is said that at this time, Yahweh and Yeshua will destroy the current world and then restore it again to make a new one. They will also raise the dead, and the dead and the living will stand and speak before Yahweh and Yeshua. Yahweh is the proper name for God. And um, they will be judged. And so all those who are good and worthy will be called into heaven and will live with Yahweh. And all those who are bad, unjust, or unfaithful will be punished and denied this right. And I think this is where the concept of going to heaven or hell after death really comes from. Because in the Bible, it's not often specifically said that after a person's life, you go to heaven or hell specifically. I think it really comes from this in the, the second coming of Yeshua, because it says very explicitly that you will be judged at that time. And so these are some um, basic designs that they made that could be used in the interiors of any of these sections of buildings that um, correspond to the religion. Here is a repeating uh, Star of David symbol for Judaism. And up there I use the crescent and star symbol, which is also used to represent Islam. Um, it actually also has roots in Christianity from the crusade times when it was used very often by the Roman Catholics when they invaded um, places where um, Islamic and uh, Jewish culture were created. And so it actually doesn't have roots in uh, Hinduism at all, but they adapted it. And I used the Rubel keys as the star and the star and crescent symbol. Um, this is mostly <laughs> just an idea for an um, arts for doorways or um, windows uh, for a Christian uh, church where these extra lines outside of the main arcs would be different le uh, layers of wood or engravings. And I have a fractal um, which has three repetitions and eight parts for Hinduism that could be a wall designer, really anything. And then these are just some of uh, the models which you can see here just up close where um, I made a Hindu temple, which is actually the reverse um, almost of Hindu architecture because typically the levels start off taller and they get increasingly shorter 
um, as you reach the top, and I did the reverse of that, where it gets cre increasingly um, longer, but it is proportional. Um, and I have this, which is for Islam, where from the top view, it creates the Rubel Hughes symbol, and it's also used numerical components of four and eight for the widths of the squares. This is um, Christianity, which I use the numbers three and seven to be my important numbers. And so everything has a ratio of three sevens. These original side lengths are seven, which means that um, these lengths are three, and this length right here is actually three sevens of three. And this is also um, for Judaism. It has a more modern design with funky roof. And um, the lowest part is um, three, the tallest part is six, and it's also using a partial hexagon, which is created when you connect the lines created in um, the Star of David. And then the next slide is really just uh, all of them together, oh, which you can see here, <laughs> it's fine. Um, and so it just shows and connects back to my project statement about how you could create a design for one building um, to connect them all. They were too big for me to try to transport with them all connected, so I just put them together. But that is for the population that has multiple religions, and that's it. That's it? <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. yeah, if you have questions, you can ask. So many, so many. <laughs> but I, I'll let somebody else, if you want to start. I'd love to know what inspired you. Yeah. Um, so when, like, what I want to major in in college and go into is I'd be going to have to do um, with, like, international, um, like, different cultures and stuff, but I've always been pretty inspired by religion and the different philosophies of each of them and kind of how they all connect together, especially Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, because they all believe in the same God, but they have very different ideas of what um, that God expects of them. And so I've always tried to just look more into it. And so I, was, I learned a lot from um, doing the research for the project. And so now I know more. And so that makes me happy. Did you start from the math perspective, or did you start from um, the religion perspective, and did the math grow well, out of it? Well, Carrie made us do a lot of planning for the math section, so I always had an idea of what my math was going to be, and because it's architecture, it uses a lot of math. I knew from the beginning just that I wanted to do religious, um, something based on religion, and then religious architecture came up because she had um, pre-planned ideas that people could use, and one of them was architecture, and I was like, okay, then I'll do religious architecture. And so then the math components came in afterwards, but yeah. Students could choose any topic they wanted, and they're they're quite varied. I, mean, I had no idea where her where your topic was really going to end up, so it was all there. They generated it, and that's kind of the philosophy of the STEM is that connecting it to they get this idea and they can connect it to the mathematics afterwards. A lot of great work. Yeah, uh, it's really it's really remarkable, Thank you. and. Um, there, there's so much that I'd, I'd love to ask you to talk about because it opens up into so many different things. But, um, but that's part of what's so cool about it is that it, this is the sort of thing that, um, I mean, you've, you've, the whole vision of, of, a, of a single building where four sometimes mutually hostile religious traditions can come together that whole concept all by itself is a fantastic thing. And um, I can only just, you know, um, commend you for, for taking this on. Um, yeah, and I hope that you, you know, you feel that it further inspires you, that you're not just burnt out by all the work that you have to do, but that um, you'll continue to be interested in and pursue. It's really great. So, I 
Sarah, yeah. thank you. I would say for Carrie, is it tomorrow? Is it tomorrow or Friday? Um, you know, tomorrow's a weird day. So there are the, we did some presentations today, um, and there's like four tomorrow. I think we're going to have to do two next Wednesday. Yeah. But on Friday evening, along with the art show, right. all of the kids are going to be um, the students. There's like seven groups, and I think it's going to be more of a gallery than mm -hmm. a, than a presentation. So they'll all be set up and. And the projects are so different that it's just fascinating. I really, this is my first time doing this, and it was, I was nervous. I didn't know where things were going. And so for them, it's the same, and it's a process. But they're all over the board. I got one about um, Lyme's disease, a couple rocket trees, a pumpkin hurler, um, one about the fashion industry. And those are all topics that the students chose and not. Did I miss one? I don't know. I might have missed one, I'm sorry. So, yeah, but you're welcome to come but in. They'll and be here Friday night. They'll be here on Friday night. Friday night. Friday night. Yep. And they're all very different. This is different than some of the other ones, but it's all very cool. So, yeah. so, anyways, thank you for your time. Thank Sarah, you. Sarah, thank you. Sarah, for coming. Sarah, thank you very much. She's not, no, but she's not listening. <laughs> that, that was very impressive, and to come in front of all of us and do that took a lot of courage and. It's one of our favorite things that we get to do as a school board member to hear that. So thank you. I'm gonna move. Thank you. Thank you very much. Did everyone sign in? Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna just give you that so I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Public comments, or are you guys all here for stuff that's on the agenda? Yeah, everybody, Meg, yeah. Okay, welcome. Um, I'm just gonna go through the uh, minutes and then we'll get right to you guys. So a motion to approve the minutes of May 2nd. Oh, Silence. <laughs> Gary and Carl. Any questions or comments or changes about them? Lisa, you do a really nice job. Anybody find anything? Well, he's looking. Shannon and Lucy, can you stay for the yeah. like discussion? Yeah. Okay. So on page four, <clears throat> um, about midway, the paragraph that starts, some discussion followed around the criteria, mainly offensive and disruptive. It says, it says Kari Bradley had drafted a policy around this. I didn't actually get to the <laughs> policy part. So I think we, what we could say is Kari Bradley dra had drafted some possible criteria. So, yeah, so we're on page four of the packet. Um, about halfway down, there's a paragraph that starts, some discussion followed. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So the second sentence, mm -hmm. if it just read, Kari Bradley drafted some possible criteria. Okay. It, 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 it could have all the other words. Anything else? All those in favor say aye. Opposed? Discussion agenda, flag policy. So, I don't know what it was, two or three weeks ago, we had a meeting and Kari got Scott to help him <laughs> create a board statement maybe, or something that, the start. You, yeah, the start of something for the board to think about when we consider things like flying the Black Lives Matter flag. Right. And so I hope everybody has a copy of what they came to. And Kari, I'm going to let you. Yeah, so, so just for the audience, we, um, you know, we had made a decision as a board to take out the flag, the Black Lives Matter flag, flow, although we weren't specific about when and how and, and the logistics. Um, but as we were, you know, 
following up on the next steps, you realize that there's actually, this is actually a bigger issue. And where the board and the school stands on diversity, equity, inclusion, in a broader sense than just the flag, is something that we, we need to address to provide context for flag flying and other activities. And so we really felt it was important to take a step back and really think about the broader issue. And so I volunteered Scott and I, and it's actually a big topic, you know, if we, and you know, that's obvious, um, but it was really obvious when I tried to sit down and put some words to paper. So what um, I thought of as a starting point is rather than draft an actual policy, um, it's almost, almost inspired by core values and belief statements like we have on the wall here. It's like, let's step back and, and fundamentally, what is it that we believe? And then from that, we can start thinking about policies and other things. Um, and so, because it, it all starts with beliefs, right? If what we believe will be eventually turned into action, which will become beliefs and actions for other people in the school. So I really think that's, that's a, a logical starting point for us. And so I did my best, and, and Scott helped um, craft some statements. And I'd really like us to you know, really think about them. Um, if you like this approach, if you think we should be doing something else, let's hear that too. But um, um, you know that that's that's kind of it. And I'd like to get feedback and, and really kind of wrestle with these statements. Have you guys seen the statements? No, they have not. This is to the board. Okay. To the board packet. Yep. Uh, yeah. It just yeah. 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 I wonder. Yeah. I wonder. Should we make copies for these guys? We can put it on the. You can uh, put it on the document camera. Do you want to do oh, that? That's yeah, a great idea. And, yep. Um, yeah, that's okay. While you do so, that, and, and, and I just invite you to talk to this and how that came about, the letter that came from the yeah. attorney. Do you want to do that first before we do the? Well, I think it, I think it actually gives you a lot more leeway. Yeah. Um, I, I started. It's a, it's, a, it's a separate but related matter. It's yeah. a related yes. matter. I think your beliefs, and I I couldn't agree more, Kari. Actually, after sitting through chairs training for the past six hours today that boards should develop their policy based on their vision and beliefs. So I think this is a great place, so I commend you and, you and Scott and thank you about that. Um, I had a conversation with Scott Cameron. I gave you last time a letter from Pietro Lynn about where the legal implications might be. And um, I'm trying to look for both, and I think there's, there's leeway. And so Scott and I actually had a long conversation. He said, you're gonna to wanna to talk to my partner, Bernie Linda, because we have a debate going just in our law firm. <laughs> Okay. So that's a good way of cutting to the chase of there is no I was, here. I was sold from this letter. Now so, you tell me you're debating. No, no. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's a real debate. And the ACLU, I asked them to, to come in at Vermont ACLU. They will not give us advice. No, yes. they, they will not do it. They said, we will not touch this. Okay. Which I was it's, like, it's okay, that, guys. Is that unclear? Yeah. yeah. So I want, I want you to know as a board that you're in a place that is unclear. Cutting edge. So yeah. I went and had a conversation with Bernie, and I've, we've worked with Bernie, I've worked with Bernie before, and so has the school. And I said, and knowing, because Scott and I talked about the gamut, and I, he said, what? And so I said, Bernie, will you write us a letter about what your opinion is? Because that's the, I wanted to deliberately show you the opposite of what Pietro would advise you. Because as some lawyers say, a legal advice is what it is, legal advice. You have to make your decision. So I wanted you to see the gamut. Well, I appreciate that we so, got kind so, of an opposing But I also want to let you know that when the ACLU said to me, we won't give you advice on this, this is not a place we're going to get into for Vermont. To let you know that. So. Yeah. And then I'll three, three very different. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, so have people read Bernie's memo? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> it gave me some comfort. Yeah, as opposed to, as and opposed to kind of a, oh, you know, pit. I, 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 think, I think what it'll, <coughs> for the question of what we can do with the flagpole, I thought this letter very much strengthened my, my own sort of take on this going into it. Um, the fact that it, the piece of it being that we, as an institution, are putting this flag up, same way we might. Mm -hmm. Same way we might message curricula. So, you know, this is a message from this institution to this institution, <coughs> not a message 
we're putting the flag up, not a group from within the school. Does that make sense? <laughs> and, and that we're not obligated to allow to, other to then groups allow other groups to, to come to us and say, "Oh, well, if you did that, we wanted this." It's not a. Good, this is a question of us stating our right. support. Support. Yeah. Yeah. Um, near the bottom of the first page, it says, "As long as these actions are reasonably related to legitimate pedagogical." Uh, pedagogical, pedagogical, sorry, uh, concerns. Yeah. Um, so it would seem that we would have to articulate those. Well, and it's, we have well, right and I think with the, right I think here. with this policy, we're we. Well, well, I think I think you're getting there closer. Yeah. We, we would um, want to do that, but um, you know, just speaking for myself, I'm comforted by this as well. I, I feel like lawyers are, are usually paid to be very conservative. And they want to avoid the worst case scenario and help you do that. So that now that we have sort of opposing views, I feel like you know we can reasonably defend our our, our actions, and um, it, it fits with what I had sort of thought of in terms of this issue. And we had talked about this, and Scott and I talked about this too. Is that we don't necessarily have to have a flag policy at the school. We could say that this issue is so um, important to us and so unique, the Black Lives Matter movement, um, these students at this particular time in, in, in our society, um, that we feel compelled to, that this flag should fly, period. And we're not gonna consider other requests, if we don't want to, um, but, but we, could, we feel this strongly that um, this is the time for this flag. So let's take a step back for a second. And Kari had two questions here. What do you think about this approach? And then what do you think about the beliefs? So the approach, let's just do that. Are people comfortable with working from beliefs? And then maybe we go to a policy, maybe we don't. You yeah. know, maybe we just have our beliefs Set here. Beliefs. Um, can I just, uh, for a clarification, Adrian? Mm -hmm. on, this is on a separate track from the flag. That's correct. So yes. our decision on the flag s stands. Uh, yeah, I There's agree. no yeah. revision of that. Yeah. Okay. This is this is part of. I mean, it's related, of course. Um, we wouldn't be doing this most likely, sadly, if the flag issue hadn't kind of prompted it. But um, but this this is uh, on a separate track. Yeah. But, but before we. Confer, can we just hear from everyone? George, are you comfortable with our flag decision at this stage? I, I am, absolutely. Yeah. And, and Carl, you are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. So, and that decision was, remind us, the flag will fly. The flag will fly. Yeah. <laughs> details to be determined. Details to be determined. That's exactly what That was the motion. And the hope was that we would feel comfortable after doing something like this because the hope is that next week there's something going on. And that was where we were in May, that something was going to happen next week, maybe. Mm -hmm. And in a minute, we'll hear from you guys. But I think. Okay, we'll get back to flags in a minute. Then. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, approach. Yeah. Are people okay with this approach? You want to talk about beliefs and then move, maybe move into policy or um, get into other ideas? Um, I think beliefs beliefs are always good. It's always good to have strong, sound beliefs. Um, there's also, uh, I, I don't know if this would enter in, um, but the aspect of restorative, the, the aspect of the flag as part of um, a kind of restorative practice on a much bigger scale than what we customarily do. Um, and I don't know where exactly that that fits, or if that's something else entirely. So say more about that. I'm not quite in, sure. In the sense of the the, if we look at the Black Lives Matter, at, at our decision to fly the Black Lives Matter flag, is an aspect of restorative justice in the sense that it's a recognition of essentially historic injustice committed 
originally against um, Africans transported and enslaved in, in the Americas, in what would become the United States of America, the institution of slavery, once the United States of America existed, and <clears throat> everything that has happened historically since the abolition of, of the, the constitutional abolition of slavery, but from, from Jim Crow to, um, to lynchings, to discrimination of various kinds, all the way down to the present day. That this is the, this is the injustice, the, historic, the historical injustice that we in our own very small but nonetheless committed way have, are taking a step towards um, redressing through, there's no, how does it go Jody? There's like reparations, restoration, recognition, reconciliation, or something like that, with community on one track and the violator supposedly participating on the other track. Right. What makes this difficult is that it's not a it's not a you know a situation like the kind you're used to taking right. you know to dealing with. This is four hundred years basically. Um, and the original perpetrators are all dead. But we are all the, you know, the heirs of that. So we have to somehow make this work in such a way that um, essentially for U32, we have, we are taking steps towards a restorative practice. Okay. Recognizing that it's far bigger than just us, but that we have to do what what is what it is within our power to do. So if we go to these belief statements. How we give up because the technology Maybe was, we should takes a principle and uh, um, we could either pause and go do some We'll just read them. Can we go through one by one? Yeah. yeah. All right, so the first one says, they, they all start, the U32 school board believes that all of our students, staff, and other stakeholders make a positive contribution to our community by bringing their own individual experiences and backgrounds to our schools. Thoughts about that? Absolutely. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. No argument. No, no changes? Okay. All of our students should be valued and feel they belong. I feel like I've heard that said. Mm -hmm. yeah. All students have the right to an education free of the biases, um, explicit and implicit, historical and contemporary, based on their identity. So here's what I'm trying to capture. It's not just the color of your skin, but... <clears throat> All, all the big picture. I like this a lot, and I love identity politics. It gets hard to condense into a sentence. Mm -hmm. um, the biases, explicit and implicit, historical and contemporary, this comes later again. <laughs> every, every time we say biases, we're saying it. And I think it's important that we keep that piece of the message, okay. but I'm wondering if we could define biases prior to the text of the beliefs, so that we can simply say, you know, the bias, like a legal document where you would define the terms yeah. prior, you know, prior to entering into the text of the policy or, or so contract or whatever. So that it's clear that any time we refer to bias. The biases, it would be explicit, implicit, historical, contemporary, because if, if, if the reader gets tripped up, just kind of, I love, I love when Bill called Scott out for his vocabulary at the last meeting. This, this feels similar to that to me. I think it's, it's hard for somebody to get through this sentence yeah. because they get lost in the middle with yeah. the explicit, yeah. implicit. Trying to say too much. And, and, and they have to double. I had to double back and cover it with my hand to read the rest, to get the, the, the intent of the, okay. the initial sentence. And so, of course, this was my favorite sentence. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely beautiful. But, but it's, it, it's, it's, it's uh, an eighth grader would struggle to read it. Yep. Uh, is really what yep. it boils down to, and if an eighth grader can't read it, it, it we need so, to we need to find a way to make it more agreeable. So, a, a, a sort of a definition of bias, yeah, maybe some yeah. other words. So that when we say biases, we mean the explicit, implicit, okay. historical, contemporary. Okay. Good. 
based on that. Other thoughts on this one? Is there are other qualities of bias that we should be concerned about? Pretty much got it. I think we covered it. Yeah, it's a nice, a nice way to do it. Okay. A different way to do it. Our schools must be committed to honoring student and staff diversity in all its forms. I thought about other stakeholders too, but then I, you know, student staff seem like a good place to start. Yeah. And people see staff as everybody that's working here. Yes. 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 Employees. Yeah. That's good. All right. We must strive to provide true equity, which means giving each student access to the resources they need to learn and thrive. Our programs will respond to the individual abilities and needs of each child. Okay. So I don't feel as good about this sentence as the next. Basically, what I'm trying to do is define equity and, and then define inclusive. And I think <coughs> what I mean is inclusive means everybody welcome. Equity means to each according to their needs. Does that make sense? That's a huge statement. Yeah. It's a, as, as a board, it, yeah, to support the, that. The, the second, second it, sentence I, here worries me a little I, bit. Too. I completely agree with it, but it's huge. You know, it's what we're striving for. But. I don't okay. think that's, we, we're not that there yet. That sentence where it says our programs will respond to the individual abilities and needs of each child. Yes. Strive to yes. respond yes. to the NBAs. Yes. So I would, that's a uh, very high standard to hold ourselves to. Yeah. So I'm trying to say out, this is your debate, but I would change the word individual. I would get to something to where we've been using language around personalization. What do we want to talk about? Abilities and needs. And I wouldn't use that either. Programs will, will personalize to the needs of each child and just leave it at that. Because individualization means everyone has their own individualized yeah. program. I think or that's where I got that. Means we will make sure we meet the needs and interests, and people will find different ways to do that. Instead of, you're almost writing an IEP for this. Yeah. 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 Okay. So you could just eliminate individual, and it would. I, no, I said no, I wouldn't just eliminate that. I would say our programs will personalize to the needs of each child. I would add strive, though. We'll strive. We would strive in there, but something I, I, I would, the abilities, and I'm not trying to lessen it, I'm trying to say what we are trying, that you've told us as a board around personalized learning. Right. That's the road I'm trying to Okay. Um, okay, but back to the definition of equity and inclusive, do, do you think this is capturing it? I like the phrase to each according to his needs. It has a nice ring to it. <laughs> okay. Um, when diversity is honored, student development is enhanced, positive social attitudes are Back up. So I mean, our practices. Oh, sorry. Our practices must be inclusive. Yeah, sorry. So this is meaning that oh, children of all abilities sure. have equal access to school resources and Abilities is a, it's a catch word in education. So you might think about just saying the mean that all children have equal access. Have equal access. You, do that too. you sort of lose You don't need to say abilities. Right, you lose you the equity when you start putting in. When you start putting abilities, abilities, you start getting into tracking. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. All right. And tracking is from is actually shown to decrease. Equity and diversity. Okay. When the children have equal access to school, and I might call them students instead of children. So, okay. That students yeah. have equal access. I don't know why, but especially in high school. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay, so then uh, second to last one is when diversity is honored, student development is enhanced, positive social attitudes are fostered, and our student learning outcomes are supported. So not only is it the right thing to do, it has these benefits. Ties into everything else we're doing too. Yep. yep. And last one I think is really important. So can I ask? Oh, right. Take it forward. Yeah. Take out the word development and student learning. 
I don't know if, you're, if you want that development. I'm just student learning is enhanced. I like development just because it it seems broader to me, like developing as a as a person, as a human being. Does that? I, 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 I just, I mean, I, I'm, I was saying to Stephen over there, I, I'm right in the middle of sociocultural doctoral class right now. I know. Okay, so, so I'm reading this research. Like, I read two books this weekend, and there's clear research that shows when you have diversity and you have more inclusive diversity, student learning is enhanced. It grows. Mm -hmm. Well, what's... And it, and it didn't... It's it's like, really, that's what's ringing in my head, and it's fine. Sure. I'm fine, okay. I'm just throwing it at you. If you but say, hey, go away. Isn't that what the student learning outcomes are supporting? Yeah, there's yeah. not much difference there. So student development is more of a personal growth as opposed to an academic growth? Yeah, that, that's I mean, that. I think that's what I was going for, but now that I think about it, I mean... I, I think it's important. The learning outcomes are... are, are and there's in personal growth in, built, in that. built into those. So if yeah. we just dropped that first phrase and said positive social attitudes are fostered and our student learning outcomes are supported, um, I still like. I like. You like development. I like the clause. Well, I guess I don't feel strongly about development or learning, but I like that clause in there. What's what's which the what? student student learning or development? Because it puts the focus on student. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because exactly. once you get to the student learning outcomes, it's sounding very administrative, and yeah. it's not about the student. Well, relating <laughs> it back to our mission statement, essentially, is what that is. Yeah, yeah. I think you can leave yeah. that. Right, so what are we going to do? I, I, sleep on it? I, you want development? Or are you okay I'm, with learning? I, I'm fine if you don't take my suggestion. I'm just going <laughs> to give you some ideas to think about. All right. We'll leave it for now. And we'll, if, we can stick with development okay. for now. Yeah. So last one I felt pretty strongly about that, you, you know, in order for this to mean something, we have to monitor. So our board and our staff must be accountable for providing an equitable that kind of leads us to, well, how do we do that? Yeah, we, what's the we establish uh, policies and, and we monitor. If you go back to the fourth dot up, it says the end says needs of each child. I would just change that to student also. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that throughout. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank Any, you. Anything missing? Concepts. No. You did a remarkable <coughs> job. Yeah, my brain is not big together. enough to come up with stuff. I yes, I, I, I would tell you whether you <laughs> want to listen to either Pietro or Bernie uh, Landback or Pietro Lynn, both attorneys that gave you opinions. By setting a belief statement or into a curriculum, you will be stronger with either the advice that you were taking yep. or somewhere in between. So in terms of next steps. Well, I was just looking to see, uh, you know, I would like to vote this in, but it's not on the action agenda. So we're meeting again in two weeks, and we could put it on yeah, the action agenda, agenda as a, okay. to adopt them. Do, do we want to craft a policy? Do, uh, I'm going to stop you for a second. Okay. Yeah, Does anybody have any feedback? comments, <laughs> feedback, concerns? Sorry, is that OK? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it seems to touch all the points, kind of, it's inclusive of where everybody's trying to go and the need, your needs and beliefs. Sierra? Can you talk louder? The one more is going right there.
that phrase. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else out there? So if we include it on our June agenda to adopt it as a statement of beliefs. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna do some cleanup, so yep. it doesn't pack in. Yep, I don't think it'll be different enough that okay. so that's one next step. Yep. Do do we wanna that's, that's my next start question. Go working ahead. on policy? There's some options I've been thinking about. You know, this is really kind of coming out of thin air in some ways. You know, it's, we didn't do the Montpelier route. We didn't spend a year or two um, thinking about this and educating ourselves. We could spend time, we could learn about this topic. More. I'm, I'm pretty ignorant uh, myself. That's an option. Um, we could, uh, rather than keep this to ourselves, we could bring this to the SU board. Because we're hoping that policies are adopted SU wide as opposed to just U32. Um, as long as, 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 as we promise to do it ourselves, even if they try and mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, and, and this is not to, uh, I, I, I think. Deliberate thought process is a good thing. I always, I've always found every time I move fast, it usually something goes awry. Um, so I, I really like this police statement. And I think it's something we as the leadership team around the SU can really work with. Um, I, I don't know, and I, it's, it's just I don't know of policies that would support this more than the police statement. Okay. And I think the belief statement is really strong, adopted. Uh, that doesn't mean, I still think I, I really like, Kari, you and I talk about this all the time, I really like the last bullet that says, hey, yeah. we're gonna hold yeah. ourselves accountable yeah. for yeah. this. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. so, uh, and maybe that's the policy, is that there's a monitoring system for this, or so how do we monitor that there's something going, and I don't even know what that is, saying that, but. That's where I think you, this sort of begs a, a policy, because, Goes from we believe to thou shalt. Yeah, right? yeah, right. Yeah. And then we and then we um, ask for you know reports and, and evidence that that's actually being carried out. And do we need a policy to ask for that, or can we do that just from this belief could, could statement? We, could we say show us evidence that all of our students are valued and feel they belong? So this is where I, I would just counter what I just said. As good governance. You need a policy <laughs> because you, as a good governance, you should be using policy to direct the system based on your beliefs yep. and your vision. Someone over. Go ahead. Uh, I just have a question. So a little bit louder. Are, are you guys saying that you are um, holding off on flying the flag, or no. what are you guys no. saying? No. <clears throat> the flag goes forward. Yeah, do we have like a day or so <laughs> so we're gonna get to that yeah, yeah. when we end this discussion I want to hear from all of you guys because it's not our job to tell you when to put it up you know it, it came from you guys and you guys are gonna be the ones to put it up we might be there maybe <laughs> yeah. but so can you are you patient enough to wait for that yeah I'm just curious because I, we had talked and you know they kind of felt like it was a little bit of getting lip service by saying yes we're gonna do it and it just hasn't happened as of yet. So when we left the last meeting the understanding that we heard from Krista was here right and yeah. she's not even yeah. here tonight was that there was a week planned for next week where there were gonna be some different activities and maybe a I don't know what you call it a fair uh, an event. event something that was gonna talk about all of these things and part of that would be raising the flag and that's why we decided to meet tonight because we really wanted this in place before that happened does that help you Hello. yeah well okay hi I'm Jane Knight I'm a parent here um, I'm just wondering about thinking about moving forward with this and monitoring ourselves is there any way that we can create another body of you know of student staff and students and school board members 
that are focused on this issue, diversity and carrying it forward. And um, you know, it could be you guys can self-nominate or whatever, but something that's separate from what you're doing um, that could get together to talk about these issues and address things that come up and be proactive about what's happening around curriculum and that sort of thing. This is do, do you guys, they may have something. Well, I, I would say that that group of students is our start with that, yeah. that committee. I mean, that's, they're the ones planning the, the work. They're the ones who talked to our faculty today. Um, we had a two-hour faculty meeting built around racism and what it means to be a student in our school if you're a student of color. And, and uh, I mean, you guys can, you, you did more than I did on this. So, I mean, we're, 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 we're putting that together. Now, whether or not it's a committee with the board, I think that that's for you guys to kind of decide how you want to do that. But we have to report to you on your policies. That's our, that's our job. So. Um, thanks. I, I think that's a, a very interesting suggestion, particularly as regards developing this policy or these policies that we're talking about. It would be very unorthodox for us, at least in my experience, to have, say, students involved in drawing up a, a policy on, in this case, equity and inclusion. But um, it would seem to make a tremendous amount of sense to me since I think those of us sitting around this table are, we only, we don't face the downside of equity and inclusion um, the way some of our students do, perhaps, or some of our, our parents do. And to be able to have that perspective incorporated so it's not just a bunch of like old white guys getting together and trying to imagine what it must be like to, you know, to have to worry about equity and inclusion. Um, that we could have something that actually that people can relate to and can say either that that's good or you know it's just off the wall. It makes no sense. And this is how you should monitor maybe how you should watch out to make sure that things don't go wrong. Um, it seems to me like uh, your suggestion would be very helpful, and certainly in that specific work. And then possibly, who knows, maybe that would be the start of something more longstanding. So I would want to, I want to see the partnership that was just asked for. I would ask you not to make a committee, because then you bring a lot of things in, yeah, you know, the meeting law and structural yeah, things yeah, you yeah, do not yeah, want yeah. to have good conversations. Yeah, yeah that's and true. We are learning that we have learned that over the past six years, and we're learning that actually more and more that when the board steps in to take authority, there's a lot of other things that come in by statute, and I think you'll you'll limit conversations that way instead of expand conversations <laughs> by empowering, almost saying to the leadership we're expecting you to do, to include and be very inclusive in putting this together do well, that work and that doesn't mean there won't be board members there but yeah. it means when you start to sanction a committee and I mean this is something that we're learning very much from the public engagement folks that when you do that you really bring in some hampering ways of communication yeah. Yeah. I buy that yeah. All right. also we should be clear well, about I, the I like the idea don't, don't hear me wrong I'm trying to make it so we can have a better conversation it's just, what, it's just what we call that group that's important well, we, have a group. <laughs> we, have, we have a group that does that I mean we can, yeah. I think yeah. right so so yeah I want to draw the distinction between what the board is generally focused on policy and that's really our job that's only yes. we can do the policy I think we could probably set up a process to be inclusive of, about whatever we come up with. Uh, but when it comes to programming, yeah, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't see us being involved with right. that. Right? Right. If, if, if the staff wants to, to be inclusive, great. Well, right. I think you should say we we would like you to be inclusive. Yeah, that could be part of the policy. <laughs> you could say we'd like you to be inclusive. <laughs> you do. think that's right. But uh, you, design, you design how to do that, uh, but we're letting you go do that. So, yeah. so I'm hearing that 
policy sounds like the way to go. Yeah, we're going to need it eventually. Yeah. But I also don't know that we're in a big rut. I don't think we are either. I, you know, I'm thinking that a little time to live with these and see what they look and, like. And, you know, the more I think about the SU wide, uh, the more that makes sense to me. Yeah, because I agree. It, you know, because we're only supposed to ultimately have one set of policies. But we also, before we develop the policy and finalize it, if it makes sense to have their buy in. So, what if we bring this to the SU board as a beginning step and see what their reactions are? I can bring it to the executive committee next week. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah I would just there. warn you that June 6th is. Uh, we're about to send out uh, a three-hour meeting for the board. <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's not that this isn't important. I don't, I mean, I don't you know, know we say at the executive meeting, this is more important to get out there in front of the other things that need to come. This is just classic. We're trying to nail down three goals, and here, here we haven't even done that, and we're adding right. something. Right. <laughs> so that's the so, other discussion. So then, you know, it needs to be like anything else. It needs to be calendared out. Okay. You know, floor. So let's floor. do that as a first step. You bring floor. it to the executive committee, and we'll, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a, a belief it's statement. A broad statement that just like we did the consent uh, gun control, that could fall into policy. We can develop more direct policy, but this can fall into our harassment policy, for example. It can fall into keeping our students safe. So we already have some policy in place that this can fall into. So we don't need to, you know, yeah. I don't think that should be a hold up. Maybe, you, maybe this not. Can be you know, because it's our responsibility to keep all our students safe. You know, just under that policy falls already. It falls already to, into me into bullying, harassment. We already have policies for that. This is just more specific. I was just wondering if this is like obviously it's a hard question you have to deal with, but I personally fully support this. But I was just wondering because I know there are a lot of students at this school who don't agree with this at all. And I was wondering what you guys are going to do if they come forward asking so what, for some what sort do they of representation. Not, what do they not agree with? Well, I mean, I I don't believe it, so I can't really speak from their perspective. I think. So do they not believe these belief statements? It's more around the flag. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. more around people yeah. saying things like "all lives matter," like "why can't we fly that flag?" Sort of bad dialogue. This pretty clearly states that all lives it, matter. I don't think there's yeah. any question there that anybody could right. complain. I think one Sierra. Thing that we heard today, oh. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Jerry. Is that there was a teacher who had responded to the survey that went out in that same way, but all lives matter, and she needed to hear from the students what the flag meant to them okay. to understand where they the perspective to have that shift, okay. and she did, and so I think that's the point of some of that callback work next week okay. is to help students see what it means for the students here to raise that flag. It's not about whatever's out. Anywhere else, it's what it means for this group of students. Mm -hmm. Sierra. I just wanted to say for those like active kids, like I know some of the more specific like, opinions of people that are against the raising of the flag, and um, all lives matter is a very common one. But another one that I've heard is that because it's specific to a group of people, and I don't mean specific to a race, I mean specific to like an organization, um, and people under the name of that organization have done things that they believe are morally wrong that have nothing to do with race, but um, like those in Black Lives Matter, some small group of people like under um, that name have um, done more extreme things uh, around uh, police brutality and some like chants and other things that I've seen them like show me videos of and like some things where they're like, I can't support this specific organization because under this name, this organization has technically done this, this, and this, which is beyond just striving for like equality of race, but is more specific to being what they consider disrespectful to like um, police enforcement or like government and stuff like that. So just like understanding that too, to try to address that in the week where you explain mm -hmm. what Black Lives Matter flag means, I would ex see how, explain like how we're viewing it, whether we're viewing it as the organization or as we're viewing that flag as just representing a race, like beyond that organization. Because I really find that when we have these debates and dim roots and stuff, that it's really some people 
see it as equality for race and some people see it as specific to an organization. Mm -hmm. So I would talk about that. And also because she was asking about like what about people who like who want to raise other flags, like if they were to advocate for the All Lives Matters flag, you were saying that well, you kind of had a contradiction about whether it was about um, students or not. Like you were just like, let's as a board talk about what our beliefs are. So we're not going to have to deal with other groups of people who are asking for it and like um, asking for other flags and like have to review that. But then you were saying that it was about the students and how they were doing the flags. So I just have to, like, can you explain what you're based on, whether it has to do with freedom of speech and like, the student body because I think then you will get into problems with other people wanting to advocate for other flags that represent stuff and like having to address that. <laughs> Good question. Yeah, yeah. 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 absolutely right. Yeah. So, so we, we clearly need to, we said this in the last meeting, we need to have a statement about the flag specifically, why we are authorizing and, and, and going this, right back this to the memo. To support. Well, yes, yeah, yeah, but going back to the memo, what are the legitimate pedagogical concerns yeah. that are being addressed? Mm -hmm. um, so we need to develop that as part of this. We also need to think for ourselves and maybe make a statement about flags in general. And are, are we going to consider other requests for flags? I mean, we don't do this tonight, but we will, we will get some. Yeah, okay. And we're going to have to have a um, way to respond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You're right. You know, this is not one little thing. This is huge. And this is why we're where we are now. Instead of just saying we're going to let the flag fly, we as a board have to look beyond just one flag going up on the flagpole and all the implications and all the different ways that we'll look at it and figure it out. Thank you. But I, I just want to point out that there is bias and there is racism. And like there's a there's a clear line between the two. And I I trust that we as an organization or institution, excuse me, can figure out what is a bias and what is racism is 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 not equal. I don't know if I was artic uh, as articulate as Sierra, but just wanted to say that. So back to how I mentioned a lot of reading lately. Um, there's quite a bit of case law on this. Um, and I'm not gonna remember everything. I wish I had a book I was reading last oh, night no, called uh, that gave a lot of history of uh, education and race issues and freedom of but here we're talking about freedom of speech that there's a place, and, and this is Pietro with Pietro Lynn in his letter to you was aligning this to kind of like there's three domains, and if you can get into the curricular domain, you're gonna have a lot more directability than you are to limit the speech of students. And actually some of this has been proven in K-12 and some of this has been proven in higher ed, especially with student newspapers about what's the right for a student newspaper to have free speech right. and have a yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so there's been, a, and I don't, I'm, please, I, I wish I had everything. I really well, a lot of it's in Some of it's in, it's in Bernie's letter, yeah. too. So I think it's, well, I, I think we have, we have to protect the rights of students to have free speech. The board in doing a belief statement, because you're getting to the place where curriculum comes from values and beliefs. That's the work we've been doing for the past three years, three or four years now, as boards, and saying what do we, what do the communities value for students to know and be able to do? Hence, the student learning outcomes. 
So, and getting to this, you're getting, as you think about a flag, you know, as Kari, as you were asking, you know, so how do we judge flags that we fly and actions that we take as a board? Um, and I'd rather go to that bigger spectrum than just the narrow flagpole piece, but actions we take as a board, how does that directly relate back to that? We have to allow all students to speak, just as we had two different <coughs> student demonstrations out of the flagpole in the past month. If there were more, we allow them to go. You told us that in your mission. You want students to learn to be active in their local and global communities. You said that very, very loudly yeah. to us. So um, I, I would say in your statement about the flag, while we want our students leading the way they are, you're going to be on stronger ground if you link it to what the board is thinking. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And I just want to um, be clear on what some of the opinions were that were being expressed that Sierra said. So I'm going to make an outrageous statement that's not feasible. So I, I realize that going on, but just to drive the point home, what if we were to raise a flag that said, all black lives are important. By raising a flag that says all black lives are important, it's no longer affiliated with the organization Black Lives Matter, so it's no longer a direct you know, affiliation to the organization. It's a, a, a statement of belief. Then that statement of belief can't be opposed by those that have issues with that organization and the way that they're dealing with police brutality. Now, I know it's not feasible to create a whole new flag and go get it made and da-da-da-da. Like, that's not a feasible solution. But that's basically, if that were to happen, that would solve some of the issues this other group of um, students have, just so that everyone kind of understands where that's going. So it's not that they believe that the race, that the, that the black races don't matter, per se, in all those. It's the organization. Now, I'm not saying that's what we should do or that's feasible. But this, so it's not necessarily a racism piece to some of those students that have different beliefs. And just for the record, that's not my belief and it's not my daughter's belief. She just happens to know that one and make sure everybody was represented. Thank you. Um, if you guys look into the police brutality, it has people clump in black people with the Black Lives Matter movement. And the Black Lives Matter movement did not do that stuff. Like if you look into it, they didn't do that stuff. So I just want to clear that up. So that would be great if we could bring that up during that week when you guys are talking about it, because I think that would be really helpful. Yeah, can we can we help a little bit with this in terms of like we're planning a quite well, I was gonna say extensive. we're almost ready to yeah. go to the next wait two so I think the next step for us is to bring this to the SU board. Executive and, committee if they want Executive to. Committee first yeah. and then to the SU board and then from there, think about policy. It's almost June. We're obviously not going to do policy by the end of the school year, but that's sort of the goal for next year. Are people okay with that? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Stephen. So, um, one of our requests was just that we had time to put things together. Um, and so, what we have together, and I don't have every single detail, but I know we're, we're, we're getting that uh, ready. Um, so starting with really last week, um, the BLAM uh, student group um, worked on, a, they did a retreat and worked on um, their presentation to our faculty that occurred today um, and the work that they did there. And it also started planning for, um, for next week when we want to provide callbacks and we've partnered with other organizations and you're gonna to have to help me with some of those. I'm showing up for racial justice as one organization. Yeah. <coughs> right. And um, and we've also reached out to students at Montpelier who who did some of this work as well. And um, and so we're going to have a series of callbacks and um, and assemblies that are available for students so that they can learn more about what's happening. And, um, and in fact, some of the discussions were pro providing space for students to, um, to grapple with the issue, not just you know, be presented with something, but to actually engage in some dialogue with that. Um, we wanted to culminate that with a flag raising. We were looking for Friday, but we already have 
other things booked on Friday, and we're finding we have other things booked on Monday, but we're still going to figure it out. All right, so um, June the 4th is the date that we were going to, to raise the flag because that gives us time to have the conversations with our students. Our staff has started the conversations now. I think we're becoming much more educated about what we're trying to do. And um, more importantly, the students in BLAM are having a greater opportunity to express the why. Um, and that's really the, the, the most important purpose here is that why we're doing this and why it matters. And so I think that we're on track um, for, for our part. I know that we've kind of been running two kind of simultaneous courses, right? The board's trying to figure out what it means, <laughs> and we're trying to make sure that everybody is educated because that's what we are as an educational institution. And so, um, so I think we're at that spot. Like, we're, we're really, there's been a t tremendous amount of mind power put to this. Um, mostly by this group of students and their um, faculty advisors uh, to, to get this going. And so I think that for us, we feel very confident. You know, we're, we're, we feel that the board has supported us um, in, in this matter. The board's going to have to deal with future issues um, in this, but that's, that's for you guys. Um, and uh, for us, I think we're in a good spot. Um, is that it? Can I get a head nod? If you think <laughs> <laughs> spot? We, we good? And that woman who wanted to know left, unfortunately. <laughs> she's, she's just outside the door. Oh, we'll okay. talk to her. So, um, that's not a problem. <laughs> Leticia might let her know. Yeah. Okay. So, so, yeah, I think oh, that, I think we, we, because we've had these two parallel things going, it's felt like we're not saying yes to raising the flag because the board's trying to pursue their policy and their beliefs and all of those. At the same time, we're planning all this other stuff. And so, um, you know, as I said to you guys before, we're on track to do this, um, and I think we've got everything in place. Yeah. yeah. And I hope you understand that we're fully supportive of this. I hope that's clear. You know, we're trying to get our ducks in a row, but I don't think anybody has ever backed down from what we believe to be really important for you guys to do. What time, Stephen? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, we're, we're looking at callback time, so about 12.45 is what we're looking You'll, at. Will you email us? You will absolutely know the details <laughs> of, uh, of this because we're, we're finalizing the week because um, I want you to know what's happening, too. So when we get those um, those callbacks, finally, to me. I'm also thinking there might be an opportunity for school members to come in and participate in those dialogues just as community members, but also as school board members um, in those discussions. There just can't be more than yes, <laughs> the law change. Oh, good. The law change. I was going to restrict you to What did you say? The law change was signed by the governor today. When, what, so oh, what, what's the change? Yeah. The change is if you're not coming to do any business of the board, you can be together in the same place. Oh, oh, oh happy, happy day. My social life will come back. So a board member and deputy secretary that So just so that, if, if three board members, three, uh, more than three board members were together oh, in one location, it was considered a meeting. And so even know, if they yes. all three came just to hear you guys, or four came to hear you guys, then it suddenly became a meeting. And so for them, so that got fixed. So um, did you want to say something? Oh, I was just going to say one of the education parts that we're doing is um, we we talked to one middle school core already, and mm -hmm. we had like a, a cool open talk about racism and stuff and one more core has requested to have like a little talk and meeting with us so we're like we're starting the education with the younger kids earlier than when we started talking about it and I think one of the main things that we were trying to do with the flag raising is invite the, the feeder schools so the younger kids can know that there's like older kids doing this type of stuff because I, I know my little siblings go to school and I feel like they would all want to be part of it. That's one of the main things we're doing with the education part. And I want to say, you had, I was right in after you guys were in there with the uh, middle schoolers. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. And you definitely, they, they were listening to you guys. They yeah. really, they, they really were so in. honest. Yeah, I, I walked mm -hmm. in. And you, you didn't know it, they didn't know I was coming. I was in there probably 15 minutes later. The conversation was still going, so thank you. Are there two cores or are there three cores? There's three. three. So, I was going to say, you, you've done one, you're going to do another one. It would be great to do the third, too. Yeah, yeah it's definitely something we want to do because just seeing how open and understanding one core was, I feel like it would be really good to talk to all of them. Yeah. So, 
So I'm curious, Stephen, do you think it would be helpful to have a statement from the board explaining why we made this decision? Well, um, I think you did it in your belief statement. Yeah. Okay. And I would leave it as that right now. Okay. Yep. Okay. I think you did the hard work you needed to that we were talking about and the reason we moved the retreat for tonight to get to this. Right. I think you've got that and I would say this is where I think less is more. Stand okay. behind the okay. great statement you just made. Yeah, absolutely. And right, let, and this is not final, but no, you, know, you don't need it to be final. No, we don't need it to be final for, yeah. for June, before June 6th. No. Well, the question is, will everybody have to report in the We don't meet again. I didn't hear the end of what you said. Well, the, well, no, my only question was, was it going to be ready in time for the flag raising on June 4th? Because that's well, be a we can certainly. I don't. I think we can put it out there without having adopted it. Yeah, I yeah. think you can, and I yeah. think you can. If, think if we just, if you clean, clean it up, version and yeah. send, 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 send it along. Send it along. Okay. Okay. I don't think I could be here on the fourth, but maybe I can't be here on the yeah. fourth either. Yeah. No. If someone could be here, there either. I'll, I'll try. There we go. Monday, we, we, we can it's a Tuesday. Monday. It's a Monday. A Monday. 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 I'm in my house that day. So, but I, I think you're fine. Okay. You've got a lot of this documented from the minutes of what your intentions are. And okay. I think you're, I mean, for anything that way. I feel pretty comfortable. Okay, good. Just to clarify, does the fourth seem like, like a fair and feasible date for the flag? Yes. Okay. But uh, we, 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 the answer needs to come from right here. Yeah. Right. Because he's got the overall schedule of everything that's going on in the Sorry. It's a graduation. Yeah. And we're not so we're not gonna tell you when to do it. That's not our job. We're gonna count on the administration to do that. We're supporting it. We'll do everything we can to, but they make those decisions. Okay. No. Everybody all set? Thank you. Oh. Well, I'm just wondering, I don't know if we should tell you what they've been doing in like the last two weeks. Is that is that important we to you? We heard a bunch. No. Krista came two weeks Great. ago, and we heard a lot of what they were doing. Super. Yes. Will the plan go up again next year? Is it something that will it we'll, say, in perpetuity? Will, will the flag be again? Is it flying from now on? Yeah. We have not. Nobody's tackled that one. It's a good question. It's constant work. This is a constant. We these kids aren't going to quiet down. Is the answer to that question? The flag is not an answer, I don't think. But is that correct? Are you well, going to quiet down, the teacher? Well, no. But if you just put it up for the rest of the year, that's like twelve days. Correct. So we're going to need to do stuff when we get back. Do you want to say something? Too. Say, what do you want? It. I just said it. We should talk about it then. Okay. It's good. We're going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We're good. We're all set. Thank you very much. And if I know I can't be there June 4th, but I will be with you there. Attach the first, the original draft to the minutes, and then put a, minute, a place in the minutes and say, "Yeah." No, I want, I want, I don't want to go over them before. I'm trying to fix the resolution. Issue. I'm trying to fix the resolution issue right now. That so, if you can put a, a, a note in the minutes right now that says, "Attach the first draft, Harry's first draft, unedited, from tonight." to the minutes. That way Kari can go and edit it and get it to us if we can, and we can use that and get that out to people, but at least gets this draft that was circulated here in a public meeting. And, and Krista has it. Okay. Nice. Part of the minutes. Thank you for that procedural. <laughs> Really He's getting good at it. Yeah. I really yeah. appreciate that. I just didn't want you guys to jump too deep into it. I know your excitement, yeah. but you'll, you'll, you'll put yourself in a place you don't want to be. But I really appreciate your decision. That's good. Um, would you like to do your student report, and then you're free to go when you want to?
We'll, we'll report. We don't have a lot to report. Um, well, tomorrow we are starting, I don't even really know what it is. It's like some standardized <laughs> science test, right? Yeah, it's a new science test. That's it. New science you know test. exactly yeah. what it is. You see how important it is to Lucy, right? It's very important. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, 8th and 11th graders are doing that. Is that for like our district or for the state or what? State. 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 Okay, so we're doing that and then AP tests are over <laughs> as of last week, now. which means a lot of seniors are also feeling like things are totally over. Not saying I'm included, but um, yeah, that's one thing out of the way. It's on now. It's in the home stretch. Um, and then I guess like two music thing, so you guys saw the middle schoolers coming in tonight. They have a concert. Um, the high schoolers had a concert last night. And then there was an all-state music festival a couple weeks ago. So like, not much to report, because the year's kind of wrapping up, just doing the final things, I guess. Yeah. Were you at the concert yesterday, Lucy? No, I wasn't. It I was know. so good. That's what I heard. It was, I think it may well be the best one I've seen in yeah. Oh yeah, I heard it was really good. And the chorus, the singers, usually are, um, uh, some of them anyway, are uninspired singing. Um, but, I mean, this wow. was, <laughs> that was in the past. That was then. This is, this is now. They were, they just blew me away. Yeah. I, and Roger was, was very sad about saying goodbye to the seniors. Oh. I could understand. Because it seemed like a terrific mm -hmm. group that um, really gelled and really energized everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was very cool. We forgot about prom. Oh, yeah, prom, prom happened. Prom. It happened. <laughs> Woo! -hoo. Did it go well? Went well, extremely yes. well. Yeah. Good. Yes, yeah, Stephen was out there on the dance floor. Ah, uh, that's a rumor. He was. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I would comment on was going back to the. Um, Concerts is I went to the in school concert, I didn't make it to the after school concert. But one thing a lot of people were talking about was just noticing how small some of the groups were in comparison to um, previous years. Like, I know I was noticing, like, when I first started at Youth Mutual, like, especially like the band and things were much bigger. Um, and I was talking to some of my friends who were in the jazz band um, and couldn't be in because of scheduling conflicts in the past couple of years. Um, I know the jazz band specifically lost a large group of seniors who have been doing it since, I mean, before they were really even at U32. Um, and so that's just one thing I would bring to your attention is that um, lots of people feel like the uh, music department specifically is sort of struggling recently and trying to get students involved, and a lot of that just has to do with scheduling. So. Interesting. Yeah, thanks. Is that something that's been brought to the attention of the we guidance department. We deal with it every all the time, time we do schedule. Yeah, I've heard about that. We have, we have over 40 classes that are single classes that conflict with yeah. each other. Yeah. In, in an eight class schedule. Yeah. And so there's always conflict. Right. I mean, there's always conflict. And I don't know if, I mean, Stephen and Joe, you've been in other high schools than I have, but every high school that I've ever been part of since my first day of teaching, the singleton issue is always there and the choices it makes students. Yeah, if you go to a conference on scheduling for high schools, the number one topic of conversation is how you deal with the singleton. How you deal with singleton. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. And the school I previously worked at, that's why music met at 7.30 in the morning before school. Wow. But, uh, you know, um, I wonder, Shannon, if this may be um, sort of the flip side of, of that situation is that people who are there really, really want right. to Right, I mean, that's, and like, are, it's part of it, yeah, but... Even though they're small, yeah, reduced they their numbers. Commitment. Well, I would also say that we, we saw some dips in our numbers of kids in middle school programs over the past several years as well, and that's, those numbers are starting to come back up. Yeah, good. And so, I mean, that's just, you know, some of this is the ebb and flow of uh, programs right. that happens, but we are starting to see an increase in the number of middle school kids in the music program. Yeah, that's, I think that's some of the, some, we, we kind of have two things there, natural cycle and schedule. Okay. We ready to go here? Or just one other thing? <laughs> <laughs> well, <I'm> just 
<laughs> you better be quick, Scott. <laughs> I, I will be. I will be. Um, my my Austrian wife says that the music program is something that American schools are unparalleled at, and all of her experience in um, in, in Europe and elsewhere, uh, American schools. This is something that they're really really good at, and that she values as a. Um, Know, someone who never had that. In. So it's inclusive in the school. Yeah, but it's yeah. inclusive in the school. Sports aren't in yeah, European that's right. high school either. Yeah. yeah. Next one, board goals. Yeah. So the executive committee, the supervisory union board, has come up with three goals. Um, let's see, board governance and operations. Thank you very much. Are we going to see you June 6th? Yeah, for the next, because otherwise that's it. Oh, I'll be. Yeah. Shannon? I think so. Okay. <laughs> it's a um, full board meeting, so it'll be like at 7. Okay. Okay. Well, so otherwise we'll, we'll say know. goodbye we'll now. <laughs> so you, um, three goals, board governance and operations, board monitoring of student learning, and community engagement, and they haven't really changed since we first started talking about them. Right. Yeah. We've already had some discussions. We yeah, have. There were some final edits. Yeah. <coughs> but there's nothing <coughs> substantial. Um, I would say, no, I think we talked about it a lot last time, and it's really we're trying to get, um, it was just as Carter said, or you said, Adrian, it's we're trying to get to less is more so we can get deeper. Yeah. And, and asking that question. So I guess the question is, and the next thing here is the board retreat, do we as the U32 board feel we need goals beyond these three? Are we willing to adopt these three? Um, do we need to have a retreat and talk about it? Do we need to have a retreat in August after the, is the- It looks like August 2nd is happening. And so would we want to do it that night or do we want to do it before that? I don't know. What time is the retreat? <laughs> um, on August 2nd, yeah. we're looking for a day commitment. A whole day. Yep. Okay. So that, that so night you, would be a lot. You haven't responded to the doodle poll. I did. Um, and well, actually, the, I mean, the thought, we're going to talk more about this on the 30th, next Wednesday. So I know Matthew's invited the chairs to be part of that uh, meeting. And to talk about the retreat, is it, you know, we do five Four, five or six hours as an SU board. It was thinking like, you know, something like eight to one or eight to two. All right, you were in this discussion, so if I forgot something, I'll just represent something. And then if boards, it was suggested by one of the executive committee members, well, if boards wanted to keep going to the local boards, it'd be a good way of having both retreats in the same day. Um, so that was what the suggestion. I don't think there is, Matthew and I were just talking about today as we were together, uh, a couple of ideas uh, bringing together either around community engagement or common uh, around these three goals, something around these three goals for the retreat that would be common learning together for people. And so we're, we're talking with some of the um, with different people from public access to maybe someone around uh, structures for schools to be set in to achieve the student learning outcomes, which is part of goal two in the monitor. And I guess one question would be is how many of the U32 board can come, and it might be that that's not a good time to do yeah. a U32 retreat. Oh, it yeah, might be a, a better, you yeah. know, we might be better off picking a night. So is that going to become the, official? And, and I think you're, I think a lot of decisions are going to get made on the 30th, okay, next week. and then go to the full board, to the supervisory so, union board on the 6th to say, do we all agree with this? Okay, why so, so why, do, why don't we just wait? Okay. Yeah, and we can put it on the June 6th agenda after the full board meets. So let me just put that. Okay, um, update the ninth update on ninth grade chemistry request. I'm sorry. Update on okay. ninth grade. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. We were just looking at the calendars. Um, so, um, so the update on ninth grade chemistry request. So we have all of our classes in place now, and we can actually start looking at developing that course that we were looking um, to do. Um, Part of ours was just making sure that we had everybody where they needed to be. So um, we don't have anything firm yet on the course, but that should be in the next uh, few days, and we'll start contacting families and kids. So. And I maybe I missed it. What um, 
Sierra's presentation, what course was That's that? That's the Algebra II STEM class. So it's it's kind of an, I hate to call it an advanced algebra, but yeah. uh, but it's it's more of our advanced algebra two class for kids who are thinking about the STEM fields. But more applied. Yeah, yeah. Well, it gives it gives more application to the standard algebra two curriculum. Is what yeah, is what it does. That was phenomenal. That was phenomenal. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, she, I was well, so she's, special she's, student. She oh, no yeah. kidding. Her wow. thought and. I went to four years of college and never saw anything. Uh, <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> nope, never. So, <laughs> so, uh, I'm yeah. thinking we might see her sitting over there in a couple of years. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe not a couple, but yeah. maybe next year. Um, yeah. So, uh, so I, we're like I said, we had to finish. You're going to see we have our final hire in science that helps us kind of yeah. sort it all out, um, and and so we should be pretty good here in the next week. And is that STEM course? going to be given at a time where the kids well, well, yeah, we've that, got to, you know might want to access it can actually schedule it in our, that will be our goal um, you know to access for as many students as possible and so um, but it will it will be for more than just those kids there yeah. are the kids who may be interested yeah. um, than just those who are looking for the chemistry option but our chemistry classes they're packed I mean, be really like we, we we're still seeing that so so we're going to try to give some other good options. I just want to remind us that the, I think there were two requests that were rationales for asking for the access to chemistry. One was rigor, and you know, mm -hmm. kids, kids who are already on Excel path, path and want more science rigor. The other was, um, you know, if, if the student can take chemistry now, it clears room for to take the other AP classes later in the <laughs> curriculum. That wasn't. Um, I don't think that was shared by everyone. That's not my family's view so much, but that, but, but, but offering this other class doesn't necessarily address that part of it. But there is no, the, the, it, that, our current curricular um, um, sequence allows for a student to take those AP courses. It didn't need to be accelerated by another year. Okay. For it. So that, well, that, that was, that was, that, that, may, that may be, that may be a perception, but our current, progression of courses allows for that. And so I, I don't know that we need to change. I, I just felt that was worth saying because, you know, if Michelle were here, I'm sure she would say it. So. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. And I hope that is a rigorous, interesting, engaging class that... Well, I would say that our current courses are rigorous. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah no, and I agree. Add but, to that. Yeah, but this is one that you don't, uh, you know, this it's kind of a new... It's a new topic mm -hmm. that is kind of an important topic these days. Mm -hmm. Okay, action agenda. End of the year resignations. We have one on page nine. Yeah, you'll see, unfortunately. He's a guidance counselor, yeah, right? Scott and an uh, RP coach. coach and leader in many different wells as well as. Where is coaching. whatever that high school is? Is that Maine, Maine somewhere? Maine. <laughs> He's going one. back home. Is what's yeah. happening for us. So that's too bad. Yeah, it is. Um, so a motion to accept the resignation of Scott Harris. Uh, so moved. Carl, and a second. I'll second that. George, any other comments? All those. Have you posted this one? No. This yeah. No, in fact, I've yeah, been gone for a little while. We have interviews that are, were occurring today. In fact, so. Okay. Thank goodness. We're trying to get all this done a little faster now. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. That motion carries. End of the year retirements, we don't have any? No. No. Okay. No. I'm going to skip over Sorry, that. Sorry, And then we've got three appointments and then a fourth appointment a here. Yep. Um, so three of them are in our packet. David Davis, yep. Mark Brown, and Matthew, I'm not even going to try it. Gerard. Gerard. Good luck, yeah. Gerard. And then Jill Abair. Who's coming to from Cal's? Oh, wow. Oh, no, Cal. She's stepping up. She's stepping she up. She used to be a high school librarian. So really? She wanted to get back to high school. Was she, if, was she full time at Calus? Yes. And it's a lateral move. It's not a step up. Calus is just as good as U32. <laughs> Certainly a lot smaller, fewer moving pieces. <laughs> so, a motion to accept all those appointments. So moved. Scott, and a second. Carl, any <clears throat> comments on those? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. 
future agenda items. Do we want to talk more about the flags and when we get the requests? I'm going to wait until that comes. I think it's probably worth talking about. Yeah, I was going to advise you. I think it's better to at least start having the conversation. You may not get everything both. So you want to put that on the June 6th agenda? If there's time. So flag, how would we? So, it, no, keep going. Then. That's I, I was going to say, flag, it's flag policy. And the question is, do we adopt the flag policy or not? I, I'm, I'm personally of the opinion that we may not want to. So how about if we say um, policies that come from this belief statement? Because wouldn't those policies ad hopefully address flag issues if we wrote them in the right way? Mm -hmm. uh, this is where uh, Stephen and I were having a conversation. Flag issues are not easy. Yeah. yeah. As much as I <laughs> don't want to do it, very complex. I, I think we want to think narrowly about this, you know, not broadly. We're think about what happens the next time we get a flag, re a flag request? I, I think you should think about the framework in which you might judge that. Not necessarily about raising a flag, but when you get requests to display supports of things, what's, and you might reflect on the process you just went through and say, how did we come to this belief statement? By what, what structured that for us? So that when you have, when you're tackled with a small issue, you can go right back to your vision, mission, beliefs that you have to say, how does that fit in there? What are other kinds of requests that would be comparable to the a flag request? To, uh, to this, to the, um, to me, to my mind, there's only one. Okay. And that would be Native Americans, something related. No, no that's not what you were asking. The, the school the, would take. Oh, to, like I'm newspaper sorry. articles or, or something, or, or I don't know. I don't know. It might be more around displays. Yeah, displays. You know, public. If you put a banner up across, say we raise two poles at the entrance. Public, public up, displays. Public displays of. Ex <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to call of, it. Of disaffection. Well, I wasn't going to say disaffection. <laughs> I was going to say expression of the school's mission or something like that. Uh, and is, a, is that mm. of the same caliber as putting something up on a flagpole? Is raising it in the atrium? It depends upon the perception yeah. that people ask. Yeah. yeah. But we're allowing this. We're not allowing. We're accepting we're doing, this. We're doing this. Um, I like that. Yeah. Uh, we need to in direct relation to, to people are still getting confused. the lives of the students at the school. Correct. We are not doing this or accepting this or raising this in relation to the, the bigger movement in the outside world. Correct. Correct. So I, I think that that's just a, a mindset that, you know, has to be had when this next flag arises. So a policy that addresses that issue. Well, that this is. I think that, that we're supporting the kid, the, the students of the school. That you know what I mean. That that we're not we're we're not supporting a bigger movement outside the school, but we're supporting the kids. Here, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. We're responding with a very specific request from a specific group. Right. That was part of it. I also heard Scott say something along the lines of, "We're actually taking a, a, a small step in a much bigger process." Yeah. So I, I don't know that we're exactly clear. So about let's that. have that discussion. In let's June. think about how you yeah. how you support displays of. I just don't know what the a, next word is. Opinion, or it's not and even it's, opinion. I mean, Belief. It's, it's something, but I think. Let's just call it displays right now. And, and, and so it about, just. How, what would be your pro? Because I think about other boards when they have to face an issue. I'm going to jump right to Act 46 in the State Board. The State Board is trying to say before they go through everything they need to judge for individual districts that have alternative plans, they're saying, what's our process for making that determination? Not what is the determination, what's the process? And that's what I'm trying to get you to think about, yeah. not just a flag. And that's why I, I'm losing, I, I don't have the words right now for you, but what's the process you'll use in the future when you're at the same place again? Mm -hmm. No matter what the, 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 topic, the, is. the topic right. is, 
So you can be talking generic about it, but that's why I'm trying to have you reflect back on the process that you're thinking of here, and how, what did you link it to to make to feel good about this? You were well. That's where I'm going with that statement. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah it's that's like, exactly. We're linking what it to these students, and and more so, wouldn't it be cool if this wasn't even this was a non-issue, and these kids were saying we don't have to fly this flag because this is our school and this doesn't exist. I mean, you know. Yes, that's where that's the goal. Exactly. That's where we want to be. And and that was something that I wanted to you know to say that you know uh, that's almost the retort to the the negative Black Lives Matter, you know. Um, so can we just yeah, call news. it um, flag slash public display? I don't know what to even call it. Policy display discussion. Display. Well, yeah. we, we know what we mean. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you'll get it better when thinking about it. Yeah. yeah. So everybody, give us some thought, so that we can figure out a process <laughs> to do this. Okay. Other future agenda items. May I just warn you that um, Matthew and I, the work we've been doing as the full board chair and uh, myself as superintendent, and looking at June six and looking at uh, the work we've been doing. There is quite a full night, and the executive committee and the board chairs next Wednesday are going to be faced more with tearing down, because it could easily be, a, I mean, already the executive committee, as Kari saw, we're at least a three-hour meeting, that meeting alone, to get ready for June 6th. Wow. So there's a lot of stuff that everyone's saying is very important for June 6th, and, oh, by the way, we might be, we might, I don't know if we will, I have no idea, no insight, we might hear, because June 1st was the date where Secretary who was supposed to come back to plan. Well, not necessarily back to us, it's to the state board. Uh, and I don't know how that would be released. I have no inklings, I have no inside knowledge, but I'm just saying but. it could be <laughs> a long night. And I'm not saying that to not do the work you need to do on June 6th, I'm just forewarning you. Thank you. What, what do we need so, to do? So, yeah, maybe as the youth, are, you know, the board retreat, which actually, and the black policy, which we don't have to do yeah. on June 6th. Yeah, but I think having that conversation, the reflection, and you can see, you can see how long you need to have. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just giving you the yeah. point. Okay. Well, just let's let's okay. set the meeting. Yeah, we, we will. Like we're we can move it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Board communication. We were going to hold off until this meeting to do that. Did you write the last one? No, it's been a while, I think, since we did it. I'm happy to I maybe it. wrote the last one. I think we're you weren't it? even here. Does that work? Yep. You've done a lot of work. I appreciate that. Do you want anything in the June newsletter? I think I wrote the May one. You did? Didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm off the hook here. <laughs> um, you don't have to have anything in there either. Or you wanna... if you do. It was Black Lives Matter I wrote oh. for that one. Right? Yeah. I think it would be, I would suggest that it would be good to draft something about that the board is coalescing on their beliefs about why this is important. Well, okay. Why don't, why don't we just do the same put the beliefs the front porch forum update? Well, the, put, well I don't want to put the beliefs out until they're finalized. Then oh yeah. Why don't we wait? We can, can do those in September. What, what we're up to. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can do that in September. Just use the same thing as the front porch forum update. Uh, we could do that, yeah. yeah. Plus yeah. a congratulations to the seniors. Yes, yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah, okay, I'm done with this. All set? Yeah. Thank you very much. We'll see you in a few Thank weeks. You. We got the board order. Oh. Oh. Oh, are they not on here? They are not even on here. Yeah, so a motion to accept the board orders? Yeah. Thank you, Kari. Kari, in a second? Carl? I'm just there. 97, 773, and 41 cents. Do you get that? All those in favor say aye. Oh, sorry, any questions? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you for that.